My name is Tonya Curry, and this is this week's Acumen Media Report. It's entitled, Andre Magdareta, with a double G, and other mafia names. I wanted to bunk class today, but a regular reader messaged me to say she can't wait to hear my take on Dureta's interview. I asked my editor what he thought about Mikke Kaletsi in, that Zulu slang for Skyvin. He was unamused. So this one's for you, Wendy and Winston. Let's scratch the surface of that edge that's been bugging you with Acumen Media. I've never been a fan of Dureta, and I'm not alone. Just ask his previous employers, Sassel and Nampak. He wasn't very good there, and he's certainly not improved now. If you haven't been underwater or you've been hiding under a rock, you would have watched the interview with ENCA's Annika Larson. But I'm going to hazard a guess and say you didn't watch the whole thing, and you watched the social media snippets. Am I wrong? Well, I watched it, so that you don't have to. That's what we do. The Acumen Media Machine showed almost 70,000 results mentioning Andre and 300,000 of you all chimed in, creating a massive engagement and our story of the week. Almost 80% of you were madder than a box of snakes, either at Dorator or at the revelations from the interview. Stop for a minute. Cast your mind back. Do you remember that we had an Eskom inquiry about five years ago, probably even longer? The one where Lynn Brown, faced like a slack behind, was torn to shreds by Gordon and his colleagues. It was riveting TV. Then we were told exactly how corrupt Eskom was and how they split tender cash amongst companies that were self-serving. From then to today, we've seen Brian Malefe say he was at the Saxon World Chabine, then crown stage when he was found to be a lying tow rag. Brian Torag Malefe makes a good mafia name for a mafia state. When Zuma finally exited his presidency and we had our new dawn moment, Praveen was placed in charge of all state-owned enterprises, or SOEs. We were happy. We were so naive. We then watched him make SAA disappear and reappear like a magician with numbers and a deck of magic card tricks. Praveen Numbers Gordon. That's a good mafia name for him. He started talking about unbundling Eskom into three bits, still not sure why, but at the time, we all assumed that it would be to finally privatise Eskom. But nah, numbers good on, pull the number. A little later, we ended up with Dureta, and the President Cupcake Ramaphosa said load shedding had been shed. Mafia fairy tales. We bought all this nonsense, all of it, because we believe in our country and we want to see her rise above the gangsters and shine. The true story? We've had more load shedding than under Zuma, and we've ended up with an absent Ramaphosa and a dark cloud that seems to grow like a black hole sun. It's stage six power cuts, indefinitely. Now, South Africans are faced with rolling blackouts as the power utility announces that there are scheduled power outages till Monday. Prince Eskom says that stage four load shedding will continue to be implemented until further notice. We start here where we are staring down the barrel of stage eight blackouts possibly. Of course, Eskom went on from stage three and four to stage six. This within a matter of hours. Minister of Electricity? No ways, man. Minister of Darkness. Okay, hold up. You're here to read about the interview and I'm here for Wendy. Wins. Here's my thoughts. If you take a job because you want to do country duty, as Dorator professes he does, then why do you wait for three years to stand up and cry foul? Why didn't we hear from you in the first 365 days of your employment? The answer is you, Andre, Magdureta, are complicit. I use a double G because it sounds like a gangster name. The answer is you, Magdureta, filled your boots too. You hosted a thousand zoo meetings and not once did you mention that the senior ministers were involved in South Africa's Eskom Mafia. You told us this week though, and we all know who you're referring to when you said that it was bound to come out, it's Uncle Puse Face Gwede Mantashe, isn't it? That's what we heard, even though you didn't say it, Andre. And you were probably hinting at magic numbers go down too. QSA's response, and we, like Cupcake, were shocked. Bad choice of words, as that would intimate that we actually had electricity. Oh, come on, South Africa, do you think that this is news? It's not. But here is what you should be thinking. If I know, and you know, exactly what a cesspit of gangsters Eskom is, and we all know that, then why are we complicit too? We vote, or more like we don't vote, and so the ANC keeps clobbering us. Not that I'd expect anything different from another set of politicians. I may just expect them to be a little less flash with their cash, 
a little more covert rather than this Lamborghini driving mafia. I keep getting sidetracked, that interview. Well, what did we learn? What did we learn? We learned that Dorita has a personalized mug and that he was poisoned. Well, he says so when they brought in a new coffee machine. He reckons it was cyanide and went to his GP. If I suspected cyanide poisoning, I would have made a short left journey to Sunning Hill Hospital's A&E. It's around the corner. But I guess when you're Dorita, your GP stops everything when you call. Who called for the toxicology report? Well, no, not the amazing GP, but rather Mug Dorator. He is the one who had the wherewithal to ask the GP to run a cyanide test. Another GP that was running around in the halls reckoned he'd seen this type of thing before and suspected poisoning. It reads badly, doesn't it? It sounds bad, doesn't it? That's because it's not my writing. It's the interview that I watched in full. Andre... Why on earth didn't you raise the roof when you knew that you were working for the mob? Why do you choose to do it after three years of coining a fat cat salary in a job where you admit unashamedly that you are out of your political depth? Why didn't you become a whistleblower? Why today when your contract is up and then suddenly you're doing the right thing, why do you still not name and shame which ministers you are referring to? You are a coward and you are complicit and you are a plastic gangster with a personalised mug. And as for Cyril, he is literally the worst president ever. He just disappears. He swans in, gives a higher grade speech, and then flits off to some country in Africa where we can't hold him accountable. A bit like Dorato who told us with certainty that he's going on a long holiday to a faraway land. We have heard that one before, and we've all watched Peaky Blinders, and you're no Tommy Shelby. He told us scores of people that have been assassinated due in part to Eskom and largely based in Pumalanga. So again, you tell the nation this today, but why not before they were murdered? Were you held hostage at Eskom, Magdurator? If you were, you didn't mention that bit. You stayed, you watched, and you kept quiet for three years. Look, perhaps I'm being unfair, and that's not even my rant. My rant is at you, South Africa and your inability to tear down the set of gluttonous gangsters. Come on, my country, what are you waiting for? When will enough be enough? When will we have our African spring clean? When will we rise up and remove our rotten kingpins? Mag also told us that if you pay some cleaner five grand to take a screwdriver and hit the sweet spot on a transformer, you'll cause havoc. He said it was impossible to man all these transformers, so they bought, at a massive expense, cameras that use artificial intelligence to monitor people's behaviour, such as loitering, etc. Of course, the cameras got stolen. I mean, what kind of stupid plan is that? And who got that tender? AI cameras. Get out of here. Why wasn't the army deployed to every single site? Why isn't there barbed wire and 12 locks to get into any transformer? And that person who could have paid 5k to take out the transformer, perhaps you could have paid someone else 5k per month for three years to monitor the locks. These are probably oversimplifications, but they do make sense, right? Look, whatever. I wanted to kick a let's see today, and here I am getting all worked up about my country and my people. We are in an abusive relationship with the ANC, and we are trampled on day after day. There are 60 million of us. What are we waiting for? A sign? A leader? Come on, you've seen the Godfather, right? We only have ourselves to rely on. We're nothing but fodder to corruption. Fodder grown in darkness. I was upbeat earlier in the week. I watched how one company after another exited the grid. I watched how those that were able to install solar did. But it's too little, South Africa. Move faster, be bolder and with greater purpose. In diving, we are told that if you see a shark, don't act like food or you will be food. We've served ourselves up by saying nothing or by screaming into a vacuum for too long. No wonder we use this food or fuel to feed the gangsters. There was other news, of course, if you have a cast iron stomach like Dorator. The budget speech was this week and the government, that means you and me, Wendy, took over 250-odd billion of Eskom's debt. SAA got a billion. Praveen Numbers Godan is getting money for a phantom airline. Incredible work. The Boosie public neglects and Makwabani played more sleight of hand tricks with Dali, Stalingrad and Porfu than you can ever imagine. 
If you want riveting television, try the 194 inquiry. It's filled with gangsters in suits. I, I must object strongly to this. Madam's know. own witnesses exited the building when they saw what was coming. A bit like you should have done, Doreta. I'm not going to get into a debate with... AKA's uh, memorial left the nation in tears. And a lion is on the streets this time, yet nothing happened to the tiger story, did it? Of course not. That belongs to the Tiger King. Then there was Sopa, which was nothing but nonsense hurting my ears. And there were floods across the country as South Africa struggles to keep afloat. We were hurled into stage seven load shedding without a word from anyone, so we had to work that out for ourselves. Every meeting I've had this week was coupled with an apology about poor bandwidth and signal issues. Ugh, let me cheer you up. After all, it is Friday. Kaki Karl Niehaus opened his own party called Arita. Basically, A-R-E-T-A. -E I didn't realise he had a stutter. How's your mum, Carl? Just asking. The Nulani case, which for some reason is not being televised. Why not? It should be. It's the first trial resulting from the Zondo findings, which has now fallen flat because the gangsters can buy great lawyers, and we can't watch to keep an eye on it. The Zulu king made his maiden speech against a backdrop where there was glaring spelling errors, but who cares about excellence? Then there's Cyclone Freddy. No, not another gangster. A real cyclone. That's on its way to Mozambique. Even the weather has had enough of our inaction. Oh my goodness, this stuff is not going to cheer you up, is it? Um... Kevin Hart is here. Try him because I've lost the funny. Hey, don't nobody call me Kevin Hart while I'm out here in South Africa. My name is Umpo Hart. <laughs> Umpo. Okay, they gave me that name out here. Umpo. Friends, if we're going to call what is happening at Eskom treason, then why or what don't we deal with it as such? It's really time to get off our jacksies, take off our concrete boots, and take back our country. I'm a grumpy Tony Curry. And you've scratched and scratched and scratched, only to find what you always knew. We have no choice. It's our move, South Africa.